Hey everybody, welcome to the video. So lineup building for week 15 of the NFL season over on DraftKings, going over cash game and GPP strategy. And we have a wild one this weekend. Lots of COVID news, lots of injuries, not one game over a 48 point total. It is looking pretty ugly in the NFL DFS streets this weekend. We also lost two games due to COVID, which sucked because we lost Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford. And also that Washington and Philly game, which did look pretty good on paper DFS wise for some of the players that were in that game. So it's a rough one, but we're all dealing with the same hand this weekend, so we're going to try to take advantage of it. And yes, this is take two of this video. I posted it earlier, but apparently at some point very early on, the screen went blank, so you probably didn't hear a word I said, so I deleted it, and hopefully I don't screw this one up. But if you do find this video helpful in any way possible, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, go to Fish Member over on Patreon. Links down below in the description for that. Lots of extra content over there. Optimizer, ownership, projections, cheat sheets, all that fun stuff. Not just for the NFL, but the NBA, NASCAR, and MLB once those seasons start back up again. And last but not least, this video is sponsored by Price Picks. I'm sure most of you know it is by now, but if you don't, it's Daily Fantasy Sports Simplified. Just you versus the projections. There's no sharks, 150 mass contests, or salary cap restrictions, or anything like that. Just you versus the props they offer each and every single day. And as of right now, if you're new signing over on Price Picks, you can get a free money bonus. That's an instant deposit match up to $100. When you use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. They're also running their 12 days of Pickmas promo, which means each and every single day you're getting boosted odds or just something fun to be able to take advantage of and get some extra money. So if you want to check it out, now is the best time to do so. Head over to pricepicks.com or use the link down below. And make sure you use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. It helps both of us out. But I think it'll be it for the plugs for the most part. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as always, I gotta do a little disclaimer before I start this video, because I'm sure a lot of people just run to the end of the video, copy and paste whatever lineup I built, which is a mistake, because I don't usually use the lineups that I built here, because a lot of things are going to change in the next 24 hours. And let's be honest, things will change in the next 24 hours with all the COVID news that we've had so far this week, and people have to get activated off the IR. We have no confirmation of that yet, so a lot of things will change. I am purely just going over a cash game process I use because I typically try to gear towards a cash game build in this video. I do talk a little bit about tournaments, but more so cash games. And you guys can apply my own process to your own favorite players and build lineups that way. I'm just simply going off the top of my head. By the time the slate rolls around tomorrow, I'm using the optimizer, basing things off of ownership projections. Right now, we're just kind of talking through it together to help you guys get a better idea of what roster construction is going to look like tomorrow, kind of building more of an optimal cash game lineup, if that makes any sense. So as always, we like to start the running back position in cash games because they're the most important players on the slate, or in our lineups, I should say, because those are the guys who are going to get the ball the most, and you don't want to settle the running back position. We can settle at wide receiver three, tight end, defense, whatever, but for running backs, get the guys you want in the most and fill the rest out later, because in cash games, we're most worried about volume and things like that, and running backs are the definition of volume in NFL DFS. So we're going to head over to the running back spot. And it's kind of chaotic this weekend, because if you scroll down a little bit, it looks like any given NBA DFS slate. Questionable, out, postponed, it's just an absolute mess here. And we have a lot of stuff to sift through here. And I wouldn't even say the spend up uh, running backs this week are looking really any good. I, the one I would spend up for is Najee Harris if I had the money, but I'm not going my way to spend up for Najee Harris this week. And I'm not going my way to pay up for Zeke, Joe Mixon. Uh, Patterson, Aaron Jones, like these guys just aren't super appealing for me. So I'm probably spending down, which fortunately enough for us, we do have some decent spend down running back options this weekend, which means we're going to have some extra money to spend up for either quarterback, wide receiver, or tight end this weekend. So I'm just going to bypass all these expensive running backs. They're not going to be very high owned. Najee Harris will pick up some ownership just because people have money to spend in some builds. So they'll get up to Najee, but I just don't really see it happening for me. The one guy I do want to mention before we kind of dig all the way down be below these red designation players is James Conner here. He's currently questionable versus Detroit, but he did return to practice yesterday. But it sounds like both him and Chase Edmonds are going to give it a go. Now, if Edmonds happened to be out, I mean, that's definitely a big boost for James Conner, assuming he is in. If Conner is out and Edmonds is in, Chase Edmonds looks like a fantastic play this week at only $5,100. But I'm going to assume they're both playing, which is what it kind of sounds like. And if that's the case, it definitely hurts both their upside. But I still think you play both of them. Now, I'd probably lean towards playing Chase Evans over James Conner just because he seems healthier at this point. And they're facing Detroit, so I really don't think they're going to have to do too much damage with James Conner. Maybe rest him up a little bit. But just keep your eye on the news for the Arizona Cardinals running backs because I think one of these guys is going to have a great game. And if they both play, they could both have solid games. But we'll have to wait and see on that. But just scrolling down here past the just 
the Red Sea here. This is where we start finding some of the better cash game plays at running back. And I'll just I'll just name a few here. I don't want to talk about every single running back, but my small cash game pool of running backs here. Miles Gaskin at 5600 bucks versus the Jets. They've just been terrible defensively versus the run this year. And Gaskin did have a pretty good game a few weeks ago versus the same Jets defense. James Robinson is going to be the chalk of all chalk this week. I'm currently projecting him to be the highest owned player on the slate, let alone the running back position. No over Meyer. He's going to be officially freed. The coach said, their interim head coach, should, I should say. So that James Robinson is going to be treated as such as the main back. So you're going to have to assume probably 15, 20 some touches versus this Texans defense. And the Jaguars are actually favored in this game. They're playing at home. I think there's supposed to be some rain in this game, which I guess could help them just run the ball more. But I love James Robinson. Just play him in cash games this weekend. We talked about Chase Edmonds. I think you could play Chase Edmonds in cash this week. Again, we're going to have to wait on some injury news for the Cardinals. And he's not even yet activated off the IR. So assuming it's activated, I think we can play Edmonds. He does actually kind of project well, even with James Conner in. And the reports are that he did look healthy in Friday's practice. And he is the main pass catching back. And we know Kyler Murray... Will utilize his running backs in the past game. We've seen that with James Conner in recent weeks, even though he doesn't really profile as the prototypical pass catching running back. So I think Edmonds certainly can play here in cash games or tournaments. Now he's coming off the IR, so you got to be wary about that. But seems like he is pretty healthy, and he's probably healthier than James Conner is at this point since he's been rested up. And James Conner got banged up last week late in the game, so I think Edmonds should firmly be on our radars this weekend at 5100 bucks. Jeff Wilson will be starting for the 49ers with no Eli Mitchell, but it's just really tough to play Jeff Wilson. The two weeks he's been chalky, just hasn't worked out. He doesn't catch passes, and Debo Samuel's going to still rushing attempts, and Jermichael Hasty will get some passing down work, so it just doesn't feel great playing Jeff Wilson. I know he's cheap. I know the slight sucks for running backs, but I just don't see myself going that route. Michael Carter, similar to Chase Edmonds, still needs to activate off the IR, but he is expected to. So assuming he's fully good to go, the coach did say he's expected to have a pretty heavy workload. If that's the case, we're probably going to see close to 15 carries and probably like four plus targets, which is really good at $4,700. And he's also facing Miami. Miami was terrible versus the run earlier in the season. They definitely gotten better at that, but still $4,700 for a back that catches passes and should see a decent amount of work on the ground is actually pretty good. I know he plays for the Jets, but I'm not going to get too picky here because there's just really no other good running back play. So Michael Carter, I expect him to pick up a lot of ownership, currently having top five in ownership projection for running backs and actually in the top three right now. But, I mean, it's just really cheap, and he allows you to spend up at other positions. So I do like Michael Carter a lot. And besides that, I don't really have anybody else I like, to be honest. If you wanted to get weird, you could play guys like Deontay Foreman or Devonta Freeman. They're actually popping up a little bit in the optimizer, but I think that's just a way of saying this slate sucks at the running back position more than anything because I didn't really have much interest there. But it's picking up my probably two running backs to start a cash game with this weekend, and I'm more than likely playing three running backs and cash games. That's what I typically do, just to lock up as much volume as possible. I think there's been one week this year where I didn't play the running backs. I played four wide receivers, and it's just because there was like barely any good running backs at all in that slate. But this one, I think, is still a three running back slate, even though we do have a lack of options. But James Robinson is going to be the first guy we plug in, facing the Texans. Not a good run defense. Giving up a lot of yards on the ground this year. No room Meyer. Definitely a huge bump for Robinson, and he's going to be probably the highest on player on the entire slate. So we're just going to plug him in. Cheap, chalky, running back, home favorite. Pretty much checks every single box for me. And he's talented as well. He will catch some passes. And then we're going to dig all the way down to the Michael Carter range, assuming he gets activated off the IR. Again, got to keep that in mind. He's still on the IR. But the expectation is that he is going to be, and if that's the case, 4700 bucks mm -hmm. is too cheap for running back with pass catching upside and a guy that could see double digit carries. So we're going to start off with that. And that leaves us nearly $6,000 left for the remaining parts of our lineup, which feels pretty good. Like we have two very cheap running backs start this lineup off with. Now we can head over to the quarterback position or move on to wide receivers. I'm going to be honest, I am not set in stone at the quarterback position this week yet for cash games. I think there's like three guys that are viable. Josh Allen, maybe you could stretch it to four, but I would rather play Kyler Murray. So if you're spending up, Kyler's my guy. If you're going right in the middle, I like Dak Prescott, 6,500 bucks. And if you're trying to save some money, I like Tua from the Dolphins at only $5,700. And I think it was like the only three guys I would play in cash games. I was originally leaning on going towards with Matthew Stafford this week or Jalen Hurts, but obviously they are no longer on the slate. If DraftKings posts a Tuesday slate, it's actually looking pretty good. But as of right now, obviously, we cannot use any of these players. And since I really don't care who my quarterback is, as long as it's one of those three, I will feel comfortable with it. And the great thing is they're all in different price tiers. Like Kyler Murray's at the very top, Dax right in the middle, and down low we have two of us. And no matter which roster construction type we go with, we should be able to fit one of those guys in. So heading over to wide receivers, 
We have, unfortunately, we lost Cooper Cup, who was pretty much the cash game lock this weekend. But fortunately enough for us, right below me at Devontae Adams at 8900 bucks. Now, originally, I thought Devontae was going to be a great tournament play because everyone was going to Cooper Cup, and you couldn't play both, and you could if you really squeezed it in, but really wasn't probably the best way to go. But now with no Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams becomes pretty much the next guy in line. He's picking up a ton of ownership right now. Right up there with one of the other wide receivers we're going to talk about for being one of the highest owned players in the entire slate. We also have Debo Samuel, Stephon Diggs, all fine tournament plays. Deontay Johnson, they get a price bump, but he's certainly playable still because I think this is probably where his price should be. He's just been always underpriced pretty much the entire season, so I think he's finally priced where he should be. But the guy we're going to plug in is Devontae Adams, just kind of lock up our stud here because if we're going cheap at running back and potentially cheap at quarterback, then obviously we're going to grab a cheaper defense. We're going to have some money to spend somewhere, and Devontae Adams is the guy I probably feel the most comfortable with because I don't want to allocate my funds with a Najee Harris or like a Zeke on this slate. Just give me Devontae Adams. I know what we're going to get. We're going to get around our 10-plus targets, probably get around 100 yards, and there's a good chance he finds the end zone. Past three weeks have been great, over 100 yards in all three of those games. 33, 21, 37 fantasy points facing the Ravens, who have not had that great of a pass defense this year. Just give me Adams. He's always a safe cash game play, and he is always a very scary fate. So I feel very good with Devontae in my lineup here, and we finally spent up for a stud. So now, kind of took a bit of a dent in our salary remaining, but we still have over $5,000 left for our remaining spots, which feels pretty good after plugging in Devontae Adams. So at this point, we could either go in the middle here. I wouldn't say the middle mid-range is really loaded this week. I like Amari Cooper. CJ Lamb at 7400 bucks. He's not really in the mid-range, but just want to point him out. If you are using Dak, don't mind those two pass-catching options. We're going to go all the way down low here and plug in probably the highest in wide receiver on the slate this weekend. And it's Devontae Parker at 4300 bucks, And this is basically just because Jalen Waddell is out. Even if Jalen Waddell was playing, I still think we could play Parker. And the games he's played this year, he is heavily targeted. 7, 9, 7, 9, 11, and 5 targets in his return versus the New York Giants. Caught all 5 of his targets for 11.2 fantasy points. He's going to have an expanded role this week. No Jalen Waddell, a guy that soaks up a lot of usage and targets. And that offense. So at $4,300 facing the Jets, who have the dead last 30 second DBA versus the pass defense, it's just kind of a gimme play here. I, I'm expecting him to be the second highest home player on the slate, only behind James Robinson. And with those guys being so cheap, it allows us to afford some studs in our lineup. So I feel really good about the start to this lineup here. So we have James Robinson and Michael Carter, both guys that are way too cheap. We'll be using the passing game a little bit and should see around 15 carries, hopefully more depending on game flow. I'd be more confident James Robinson getting more carries, but Michael Carter should catch some passes, which can make up for that. Then we have our stud Devontae Adams because there's no more Cooper Cup, but he's kind of a lateral pivot there. Then we have Devontae Parker with no Jalen Waddle, only $4,300, and we still have a good chunk of salary remaining for us. So at this point, we can either go with another wide receiver or plug in a tight end or maybe even quarterback. And quarterback's going to be kind of dependent on where we go with our tight end. Because if we spend up, obviously none of these guys are spend up options, but if we spend up for a George Kittle, we might have to dip down to a guy like Dak Prescott or Tua. But if we go with maybe a Mike Asiki, we could afford Tua. But at that point, we're probably going to end up with like four Dolphins in our cash game bill, which is not the worst thing on this site, but it doesn't feel that great. Because we'd have Tua Parker... Gasicki, and there's a good chance we have Miles Gaskin later on, which just too many Dolphins for me. It is a little bit overkill. I know it feels good versus the Jets, but it doesn't feel good having that many. So it's kind of the dilemma that we're in. I mean, it's just kind of crazy this week that we're in a dilemma of maybe having too many Dolphins in cash games, but I want to play Kyler too, but if we play Kyler, I don't think we're going to be able to afford George Kittle, unfortunately. We can try to build separate builds here. So for the first one, I think we go with George Kittle. I just want to mention that there's only like two tens, tight ends I like this week, and it's Gasicki and Kittle. If you wanted to go all the way down low, you could play a James O'Shaughnessy at $3,200, and Evan Ingram is there at $3,100 versus Dallas. And if you want a real punt option, we have Brevin Jordan here. He's currently questionable. He's only $2,800. Did score last week, but it's really ugly down low. And since we're going so cheap at the running back position, and even the wide receiver position too, I mean, I don't think it's a bad week to spend up. And George Kittle, the past two weeks, has been on fire. 15 and 12 targets, nearly 200 and 150 yards the past two weeks, 42 and 37 points, three touchdowns as well. I mean, he's absolutely killing it. Not that we can expect it to keep happening, but I'd be surprised if he doesn't see eight, 10 plus targets in this game facing Atlanta's defense that's not been that great this year versus the pass or just really in general. And no Eli Mitchell, so maybe they throw the ball a little bit more. I mean, they can't really jam Eli Mitchell down their throats 30 times like they'd like to. So Debo Samuel, he'll be using the running game a little bit, but they should be able to throw the ball versus Atlanta. And I like George Kittle here, so we're going to plug him in, $7,500. Bucks. 
And we're gonna try another build, maybe taking him out using Gasicki and see what that looks like too. But even plugging Kittle in, we still have 400 bucks left. They can plug in the cheap defense of the week, which is the Bills at $3,100. Like, yeah, these defenses up top look pretty good, but don't spend that much money for a defense, especially in cash. If you want to go cheap, I like the Jaguars as favorites versus Houston. They also correlate well with James Robinson, but for me in cash games, I just take the Chonk Donkey defense because if they go off, well, I'm with the train. If they don't go off, well, I'm. I mean, everyone else has them, so it's not really that big of a deal. But if you fade the Chalk defense and they go off, you're you're kind of screwed. So I just always play the Chalk defense. Not really a big deal there. Thirty one dollars, ten and a half point favorites at home versus Carolina's offense, which is a mess. I mean, I, they're just way too cheap on DraftKings. I think they're like the near the top on FanDuel and Yahoo, but DraftKings kind of messed up their pricing a little bit. So even after plugging in Devonta Adams and George Kittle, we still have over five thousand dollars left for the winning spot, which I will say feels awesome. So I feel really good about that. Just to plug in our flex, we're going to plug in Miles Gaskin. Since we didn't have Gasicki, I feel fine having two Dolphins. Even if we use Tua, I don't think three is terrible this weekend, just given the nature of this slate. But we're going to plug in Gaskin. Like I said, the volume should be all right for him. Could get close to 20 touches the past three weeks, 23, 16, 15 carries, and usually sees a few targets as well, which is fine. So we're going to plug in Gaskin here in the flex spot. That's three really cheap running backs, but all guys that could see 15-plus touches. We have 52.50 for the last two spots. And just plugging in each quarterback, we'll see what kind of money we have to work with. I'm not sure plugging in Kyler would even work because we have, you know, we have 2,600 bucks left, which we obviously there's no large receivers that are $2,600. So in this specific lineup build, we could not go with Kyler Murray. I didn't really talk about quarterbacks much, but I do like Kyler a lot this week because he's been using his legs the past two weeks, which is not something he was really doing earlier in the season. I always thought the score in the red zone, but. 120 rushing yards in the past two weeks, which feels great. And obviously the guy's a very polished passer too. I know he had some bad passes last week, but it's not like where he's Jalen Hurts where you're completely relying on the legs. You can get do some damage on the through the air. Had nearly 400 passing yards last week, and he has some pretty good pass catching options to get the ball too. No DeAndre Hopkins this week, which does hurt him a little bit, but I think he'll be just fine because he's a guy that really spreads the ball out. And guys like Christian Kirk, and AJ Green are both around 5K this week. I actually forgot to mention them talking about wide receivers, but I'd say those are probably two of my favorite mid-range wide receivers, like right in the middle. But like Devontae Parker is my favorite point per dollar wide receiver, but AJ Green and Christian Kirk aren't too far behind in terms of their value this weekend. So obviously we can't fit Kyler in the specific lineup. We could probably fit in Dak Prescott. Now playing Dak Prescott, I'd prefer to get a pass catching option with him just because he's not going to get it done with his legs. But let's just say we played Dak naked here, which is fine in cash games. But in tournaments, make sure you get a pass catcher with Dak because it just makes no sense to play him naked. So we have guys like Alan Lazard. Manny Sanders is doubtful. He's probably not playing in this game, and assuming that's the case. Gabriel Davis here at $3,700 after you get past all these red guys. It doesn't look too bad. He had eight targets last week versus Tampa. Got into the end zone. 15.3 points scored last week, or I should say two weeks ago, versus New England in that windstorm. So I don't think that's a bad-looking lineup, really. So we have Prescott, James Robinson, Michael Carter, Adams, Parker, Davis, George Kittle, Miles Gaskin, and the Bills defense. That's actually a not-too-bad-looking lineup. We have $300 left, so you could obviously play, play around with that a little bit. If you wanted to go with a Kyler Murray build, who our ownership's going to be weird this week at quarterback. I'm currently projecting Kyler to be the highest on quarterback, but I do think it's going to be pretty spread out. Between the three quarterbacks we talked about, it'll be pretty concentrated on those three, but they'll kind of be spread out if that makes any sense to you at all. Now, if you go with Kyler Murray, like we said, I probably have to drop George Kittle, unfortunately, which does put me on uh, Mike Asicki at that point, which we still have three Dolphins in cash, which that it feels gross, but with no Jalen Waddle in their face in the Jets, I mean, I think it's fine. But we could upgrade Gabriel Davis here to hopefully a pass catcher. With Kyler, I think 5100 bucks is right in that Christian Kirk, AJ Green range. Kirk's 5300 bucks, so you'd have to drop somebody if you wanted to go with Kirk. But AJ Green's at $4,900, and he had a great game last week versus the Rams, and now facing Detroit. Nothing to be really too concerned about, but 10 targets, 7 catches, 20.2 points. I don't think that's a bad looking lineup either, so it's the same exact thing, but now we have Kyler paired with AJ Green, and we dropped Kittle to Gesicki. And if you wanted to go a Tua route, We'd have some extra money to play with. Again, we'd have a lot of Dolphins in cash games, which which it doesn't feel great. But as I keep saying, I don't think it's the worst thing. But I'm probably going to upgrade from Gesicki. I know it's a pass catcher with Tua, but we're going to have the money for Kittle. So I just we're going to plug him in. We're going to have to drop A.J. Green. 
now we have forty hundred dollars left. I mean, it kind of sucks that we're just missing on AJ Green because I'd like to be able to just plug him back in. But I mean, really, you could just kind of take your picks there. Nothing feels great. You could go with Rondell Moore. I mean, maybe he sees an uptick in usage, but he's not really a guy that I think is going to fill in a DeAndre Hopkins role. Probably still be the same player, but maybe he sees an extra target or two. But I'll let you guys use your imagination. I think there's a few ways we can go this week. None of it really feels amazing, but we're all dealt with the same cards this week, so I'll have to try to take advantage of it. But with that being said, I think that'll be pretty much it for the video. So I hope it was helpful, and if it was, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you have me already. If you want to take that one step further, it's kind of fish member over on Patreon. Link is down below in the description for that. And don't forget this video was sponsored by Prize Picks, and it's just you versus the projections. And as of right now, if you're new sign over there, you can get a free money bonus up to $100. When you use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. I think that'll be it. I'll stop rambling. I'll see you guys later on tonight for the Core Place video. And I wish you all the best of luck this week.